What's up guys, FM Campbell here and welcome to episode number 26 of the Aston Villa series. We last left you getting straight into things um, after the Southampton game where we won 4-0. We started the month playing against Charleroi in the Europa League in Group A. We beat them 4-1, um, it was a Houdre own goal. Um, Avaris Balanta scored twice, Lewis Cook was sent off for us in the 69th minute. Damien March... March? Mark <laughs> uh, was sent off for them in the 49th minute. Um, Kitambala scored for them as well in the 42nd minute. Gaston Giromero then rounded things off in the 86th minute to make it 4-1. And then we played Reading in the Premier League and it was our first loss of the season in the league. We'd gone unbeaten in the league this whole time and it was by Reading. A Kevin Karanyi, or Karanyi um, scored in the 86th minute to nick the win, which was very frustrating. But we then replied with a 4-0 smashing of Hull um, at home. Lacazette, Balanta with two, and Icardi with one um, as well. So yeah, 4-0, clean sheet, which is good. Then we played the Europa League against Sociedad, probably one of the um, the bigger teams in our group, uh, in Group A. 3-0, Icardi, Phil Jones, and Will Hughes with the penalty. Another clean sheet again. And we've just recently drawn against West Ham 1-1 in the Premier League. Um, Adrian own goal. I think it hit the post, bounced off Adrian and went in. And then a 93rd minute Mark Noble penalty um, equalised for West Ham. Very, very frustrating. So this is where it leaves us in Group A for the Europa League before we get to the Premier League. So we're top of the league by a stupid considerable amount. We've already qualified. Uh, with two game, well, with a game in hand, we actually qualified with a, with two games in hand, uh, but yeah, we've already qualified. Um, and then in regards to the Premier League, we still are sat top in the division um, by five clear points as well. All the teams around us. Look at that goal difference though, plus twenty one, a very very good goal difference. Hopefully we can continue this great form. Lukaku's third, or well, technically second, um, in top scorers in the league, and Lacazette on Oliver are the Number one and two for highest average rating. Most assists, Oliver in there with seven. Timo Horn in third place with five clean sheets as well. So it's going really, really well. We've currently got four injuries. I'll just quickly go through some of my notes of what I've been writing down. Um, so yeah, we qualified for the first knockout round of the Europa League with two games in hand. Um, we went 11 matches without losing a game before the Reading game. So that was quite frustrating. Um, we'll, I was, imagine having an unbeaten season realistically I think we're going to try and push for top 4 um, Europa League spots is our target once again um, but it, like I said the honeymoon period we're only 13 games in we're not even halfway yet so we'll have to see how we go um, Lucas Romero has been quite um, in under some not pressure but he was wanted by 13 separate clubs all of them top world clubs, top clubs all around the world. Man City want Corchia. Um, I don't know whether they still want him now. I mean, look at the, the amount of players that are wanted. So it's now into Liverpool and Man, and Man United. It was Man City. Um, Arsenal already want Depay. He's re only recently joined, remember. And where is he? There he is. Yeah, Arsenal want Depay, and he's actually had a little bit of a moan. Arsenal no longer want him, but Napoli and Roma do. He was had a slight concern. I think we'll have to get him signed a new deal probably sooner rather than later, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, he wanted to join Arsenal as they play in the Champions League, um, and he's fit, he feels pressured by the interest in him, which is not a good thing and something that we can't control, which is really frustrating. Um, another thing that Depay was starting to sound like an old school Ben Teke. He said he was going to go to the team about it and talk to the team, and it was going to disrupt things. I was a little bit worried about us having another Benteke where he just moans every single bloody day and causes problems. But hopefully we can get this worked out sooner rather than later. I think qualifying for the Champions League will cure any issues that he has. Um, but yeah, going back to what I was saying, we may have to sign, get him to sign a new deal rather than late, sooner rather than later. We've got Lucas Romero to sign the new deal. He's now on 55k until 2021, um, which means that no one wants him. Because he's only signed the new deal and he's going to cost a fortune and he doesn't want to join anyone else but us at the moment. He's just him, the pie. Um, oh, so, so we've got some really good players in the team now. Um, board have started to discuss, well, they did start to discuss um, a contract renewal, which we've taken. 
we've actually taken a slight cut because they wanted to keep us until 2018 so it's only a two year deal I said I said I'd take a little bit of a cut and I will play I will, I will stay until 2021 so we've now got a five year deal which is good so if we go to our profile um, is our contract in here no nope. information maybe my contract mm -hmm. we're at, we're now on 30 grand a week which is good which means let's see what our confidence is how much so our job status does increase slightly to 16 percent um, but because it still wouldn't cost the club that much money to terminate our contract um, we still lack security on that front so we will um, one pe one thing people always say is like why don't I just give ask for a really really small contract and then like it won't take any money out of the finances this is why people re really don't realize this if you're on a lot of money and you've got a long-term deal it makes it really really hard for clubs to sack you because say for instance I was on 150 grand a week like some of the biggest managers in the world are and they turned around to me and said, right, we want to sack you, but I've got four years left. I mean, you do the maths of how much that would probably cost. In fact, I'm going to do it now. Imagine I'm on 150 grand a week. Let's have a look. So 150 grand. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Right. Times that by four to equal the month. Then times that by 12. Oh, hold on. I've done that wrong. 150 grand for the month. Times that by four for the month. So 600 grand a month you're getting. Then times that by 12. A 7.2 million a year. Then times that by, for instance, a five year deal. 36 million pounds you, you would earn. So they'd probably have to pay half of that. So it's probably going to cost between 15 to 20 million for them to sack you. That's why it's really really good to get a high contract the only downside to it is you do take some of the finances for the club which is not ideal but it keeps your security in your job so anyway moving on <laughs> um, yeah Lacazette we've had an injury issue he's now out for well it was out for three weeks I don't know how long's left now till day to two weeks um, Luke Lewis Cook is out well, was out for ten days he's now due back in five to seven days um, Everton has obviously got the long term deal I think we'll yeah, 7 weeks to 2 months he's still got quite a while until he comes back um, also very very recently we've had more interest in John Flanagan um, Liverpool and Man United won him awkward that you Man United won him Jonathan Silva Atletico Liverpool and Tottenham want him um, Garbs Luke Garbert Fulham Hull and West Ham uh, Balanta is wanted by Chelsea, Porto and Man United. Phil Jones is wanted by Chelsea. Um, Jack Grealish is wanted by Arsenal, United, Newcastle and Tottenham. Depay, as you know, is wanted by Roma and Napoli. Previously Arsenal. Um, Lucas Cano is still... Oh, Lucas Cano has actually got um, issues with his injury as well. He's back in for full fitness in seven days. So, yeah, that's pretty much all that's been going on. Um, we've got a couple of games to play until we see you next. It will be after the Swansea game. We will also should have news about the FA Cup, who we've got in the third round. And we'll also know about who we've got in the first knockout round of the Europa League as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Remember to leave a like if you haven't. Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. Don't forget the Building the Force series is starting to kick into gear now. And also don't forget about the World Network game every single Monday. Let me know in the comment section if you think there's anything I should change or go for. Um, this is the current tactic. Is there anything you would change in the tactic? Um, next season, I'd like to adapt to a 4-2-3-1. So with someone in here rather than in defensive midfield. And have sort of ball playing, ball winning midfielders in here. Um, if we do get into the Champions League, again, I think we're going to have to invest in the squad. Hopefully, we'd get a little bit of money. We do have a lot of players to sell at the end of the season. But I think if we did reach the Champions League, I think we would have to be realistic and, and we'd have to spend some money because I do want to start challenging straight away. But we'll, it all depends on the finances and how things go for the rest of the season. So we are top of the league currently, which is great news. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll see you um, on Friday. Yeah, on Friday for um, the next episode. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.